She is a critically acclaimed musician and songwriter from the UK. Karima Francis has a new single called Shelf Life, and she's here to share it with us. Nice to have you here, Karima. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Hello. So, welcome to the United States. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being so lovely. Tell what? me about the origins of Shelf Life. What's that all about? Um, I wrote this song um, one morning I've been visiting LA quite a lot doing some music stuff and I was, uh, I was in an Uber on the way to um, a studio in Topanga mm -hmm. um, and I was struck by the, you know, the homelessness, the growing homelessness epidemic and um, I just, off the top of my head I was like, it's hard on the shelf life and it was just like a lyric that came to me uh, in that vision and just like kind of seeing the contrast of lifestyles, you know, obviously LA is this city of dreams and, and uh, you know, people come here yeah, to follow their dreams and you imagine this completely this high life and um, yeah, it stood out to me like a sore thumb and I, you know, I just felt the need to write about it. It's it, a little grittier than you expected, huh? Yeah, it was unsettling for me. I mean, obviously I come from the UK and um, yeah, there's lots of homelessness there and there's, there's lots of help as well and it's not, it's not as... It's prevalent really, here. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Um, I mean, the thing about your songwriting is it, it's, it's really heartfelt. It's one of those things that you can tell when something strikes you, it comes and it comes out in your music. But you were just saying that you don't want people to think because this is kind of the first single here in the U.S. that this is all that you talk about. You have a lot of other kind of yeah. tools that you use. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of one of the first songs that I've, I've you know, talked about quite a, a strong subject matter like this. Um, and yeah, I did think it was like a, a risk because I don't want to come to L.A. and people think that I'm judging because I, you know, <laughs> yeah. I know that it's a problem that's out of control and it's, you know, one person trying to help is, you know, it's, it, a lot of people need to come together to mm -hmm. to to help the situation. And um, I don't know. It felt I just in my heart, it felt like the right thing to put out at the right time. Um, when I was here, the video that I shot with Terry, mm -hmm. the guy in the film, we um, after making the demo in the studio of Shelf Life. Um, I decided that I wanted to do the day in a life of a homeless person so people can see that other side of, you know, what they have to go through in a day and how they're getting through their days. And um, we met Terry and he was a great guy and he was actually an ex-Nashville uh, um, songwriter from the 70s. No kidding. Very successful, a guy called Kid Country and he was... Mm -hmm. um, writing lyrics and singing songs to the people that come out of the McDonald's drive through in Silver Lake. Mm -hmm. and, How about um, that? So he wanted to be involved because he really wanted to help spread the message and raise awareness too. And um, he, he was he was an, a wonderful man. And so, yeah. So I'm curious about what it was like to grow up in Blackpool and what you were like as a little girl and what your dreams were when you were a kid and you were thinking about what you were going to do in the future. Did wow. you did you project this? No, no, not at all. I mean, I remember that like my mum, she would. Um, make me like sing on karaoke when I was a real kid, <laughs> like Celine Dion or something. And she had this tape, she saved this tape, she'd say to me, you're gonna be a singer one day, and I hated it so much, but this is the biggest thing that I regret. One day I went into her knicker drawer, her panties drawer, yeah, yeah. and I got the tape, and we lived on the back of this like, there was like a horse field, like at, behind us. I got the tape and I like threw it into the field. <gasps> and so I, I don't have that tape anymore of me singing like um, the Celine Dion. Wow. And, but it was weird because I was a drummer at first. When I was only 13, I was I started playing drums in school. And but I used to kept hearing like melodies and stuff. And every time I try and pitch in in the punk bands, they were like, "Nah, we're not listening to her. She's the drummer." Like, <laughs> so I, I kind of just left home at 18 and um, I sold my drums as soon as I got to Manchester. Wow. Started playing guitar there and. Um, yeah, and the rest that, is history. The rest yeah. is history, so yeah. So why did you want to come to the U.S.? Why, why not? I mean, you have a career in the U.K. I mean, you're there. Yeah. You're, you have a fan base there. What is it about coming to the U.S. that is so appealing to you? Um, I was really drawn par partly because most of the music that I love, I'm a big fan of people like Jonathan Wilson, Father John Misty, Elliot Smith, Beck, all these like um, singer-songwriters that, that come to LA mm -hmm. and they have this sound and there's something, the authenticity in, yeah. the, in the, the playing and the musicality in music here and tonally the way it's produced is just something that draws me in. Um, 
and um, I wanted to get that sound. You know, you've, I wanted... attracted, you've attracted good people like Kevin Bacon and Paul Simon and other people who have you know you've worked with. Yeah. What's it like to collaborate with them? Oh my God, it was amazing. Um, I didn't collaborate with Paul Simon. I just opened a stage for him, but that mm -hmm. was over. Well, that's a collaboration. You, you opened the you stage for him. <laughs> I know. You, you don't expect that as a, you know growing up that you're ever going to get to do something like that. But yeah, and Kevin Bacon from Comset Angels and um, and also Flood, who who's recorded like PJ Harvey yeah. and yeah. U2, Joshua Tree, and all that. It's been amazing. I'm overwhelmed that these people, you know, hear good things in my music and want to work with me. But I just, I needed this change for myself. Um, like I said, um, there was a record that came out recently by a girl called Phoebe Bridges, and it was recorded here in um, Sound City by Tony Berg. And wow, that record, the production on it, everything just made me go, I have to go to that place to get that sound, because it's like what I've been searching for for a long time since uh, I released my second album. Right. And this is why I'm here. Well, so. we, speaking of that sound, Ooh. we're gonna take a quick break and when we come back, um, Karima is gonna play for us. So Can't wait to hear we Karima will be right Francis back. sing right here. Thank you very much, thank you.